Hello, happy Lord's Day. It is May 17, 2020. And today I want to talk about the first part of the, the five F's, which you all know by now is faith. God does not ask for much from us. Just faith, as small uh, as a mustard seed. With that barely able to be seen faith, God can work wonders with our lives. Do not worry that you don't have enough faith. Just give God what faith you already have. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, your word is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Grant us grace to receive your truth in faith and love. Bless everyone who tunes in to hear this message, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. He replied, Because you have so little faith, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. It was because they had itty bitty faith, not even the size of a mustard seed. Can you believe that? The ones closest to Jesus had so little faith. Well, as we know, their faith would eventually grow. Let us now talk a little bit about a mustard seed and its qualities. Generally, a mustard seed takes 8 to 10 days to germinate if placed under the proper conditions, which include a, an atmosphere, a cold atmosphere, and le relatively moist soil. Mature mustard plants grow into shrubs and often mistaken for as a tree. Isn't this true for most things to properly cultivate into its true potential? To cultivate our faith, we need to be steadfast and diligent in praying, meditating, and reading the Word of God. Let me give you a visual of how small a mustard seed actually looks like. Mustard seeds are the small round seeds of various mustard plants. The seeds are usually about one to two millimeters in diameter and may be colored from yellowish white to black. Think of a baby. As small as it is, it started out even smaller as an embryo. Some things are meant to stay small also, like a chihuahua dog, grain of sand, raindrops. But their size have a tremendous importance and role. Even small things have their purpose. Our electronic devices are made up of extremely small components that makes it possible for us to have a computer, cell phone, camera, and so on, to function as it should, allowing us to talk many distance away from each other and for many to be able to work from home. And even though many of us do not exactly know the intricacies of how they work, we believe in the technology, a lot of which are unseen. What if they or we put that same radiance and belief into our faith in God? What changes can occur in our individual and collective lives? Bill Sweeney posted this from his blog post titled, The War of Faith, and I quote, It is becoming apparent for everyone to see just how fragile the hopes of this world are. It only took a microscopic organism to expose that the hopes of this world don't deserve our trust. End of quote. For him, it was the diagnosis of ALS a progressive neurodegenerative disease that affects nerve, nerve, nerve cells in the brain and the spinal cord. Today, millions of lives are being upended by the invisible enemy called COVID-19. But Christians, fear not. Stand in your faith. Let me read Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, starting in verse 1 uh, up to verse 16. 
Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith he still speaks even though he is dead. By faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Verse 11, By faith Abraham, even though he was past age, and Sarah herself was barren, wasn't able to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he is... He, as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were all were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, and they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on our earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. And verse 16, Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. Khalil Gibran observed, Doubt is a pain too lonely to know that faith is his twin brother. This quote is saying that it is normal to doubt. That is why they call it faith. Faith loses its meaning in the absence of doubt. That is why Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now I, I see but a dim reflection of as in a mirror, the Apostle Paul said, but then I will see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. It is when things go wrong, when good things do not happen, when our prayers seem to have been lost, that God is most present. We do not need the sheltering wings when things go smoothly. We are closest to God in the darkness, stumbling along blindly. This is a quote from Madeline Langell. And I uh, want to read the final scripture for today. It's in Psalms chapter 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. To exalt means to glorify or elevate. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you to start your day doing just that. Do not rush your prayers. You can also journal your prayers and meditations to God. This will give you a hard copy to look back to. You may just come to realize that they have been answered in God's timing and as only God can. So that is my message for this morning, this Sunday morning. It's nice and short. <laughs> I hope it's uh, help. And um, let us now, at this time, prepare ourselves 
in the taking of communion. But first, let us watch this video of Sanctus Real called Confidence. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I ask for your blessing of the bread and all who eat of it this morning in remembrance of you. Amen. Heavenly Father, I now pray for the cup. Thank you for what it represents. I uh, ask for blessing of it and all those who drink of it this day in remembrance of you. Amen. Jesus tells us that he, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. How sweet it is to, to know of that. So thank you very much, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, blessed week. I really, really miss you. It's been too long. Hope to see you all soon. Take care. Have a good one. Till next time. Bye-bye.